Hi and welcome back to another video from Effective Dashboards. In this video, which is video 3 of our waterfall series videos, I'm going to show you how you can display the absolute increase or decrease in each of these categories using either an on-screen or a handy tooltip that shows these values as a pop-up. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is how you could actually display those. So I'm going to create a little bit of space here. Um, let's just make it slightly smaller. Okay, so I've just moved them along here to create a little bit of space. And what I'm going to show you is two new measures I've created. So first of all, I'm going to look at work orders I did this week. And I'm going to change that into a card. And we can see that that is 70. But I'm just going to add in this week. It's this fellow here. And then I'm going to add in the another one here, which is work orders uh, removed this week. So I'll copy this. Add that in. Wrong one. This one. And we can see that's minus 100. Okay, so that's the two, that's the two filters that we've got here. Uh, the two measures we've got here. Because we can actually use these and we can add these to a chart and we can show for each one of these categories the swing. So we can see, okay, wh how, what, what are, what are the work orders that are added and what are the work orders that are removed that are netting out to be this 16 work orders. Okay, so let me talk you through the measure that I've created. So the measure here is looking at the current date, which is just looking at the max for the work order date. So I've just used that max date, and it's just going to always choose the, the maximum date. I've added that filter in there, but it would, it would actually choose the max date there. And then we're going to use calculate again, and we're going to count X. So it's going to count a number of, um, it's going to count a number of work, uh, numbers in a column. And this column is going to work order details here. So we're going to count the number of work orders records where the work order details, work order added during the week is yes, and the work order details equals the current date, which is this max date here. Okay, so it's going to count that. And then the other one here, let's go in and just look at the work orders removed. So again, we're going to use the flag we created earlier. And this one here, very similar. Um, it's going to count the, the current date as the max work order date. So again, that's going to be the 25th, because that's going to be the maximum date. And we're going to look at the, 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 the defining that variable here for the date last week, which is got a current date minus one. So it's going to take us back to the 18th. And then it's going to calculate on the 18th, the results is going to calculate the count of the work order records, where the work order removed during the week is yes, and the work order date equals last week, um, which is this date here. Okay, so it's just going to count those records there. Essentially, we're going to go and count each one of these tables here in a measure. Right, so once we've done that, now the important thing here is the result is going to be a minus. I've added a minus in here because I want that to be a minus value. And um, and that's quite important. Or, um, yeah, yeah, I want that to be a minus value because these are, these are the work orders that have been removed. So let's go and minimize that. And we can delete these. I just wanted to show you those as a, an example. In fact, actually, I'll just add them up to the up to the header there for just now, just so we've got them um, available for this to reference if we need them. And just add them add them there for now. And then we're going to add in this chart here, which is going to be a a line and clustered column chart. Okay, so that's the chart we're going to add in. And we're going to configure this to show the inc net increase and net decrease for each one of these. So here's how we do it. The first thing we're going to, want to do is we want to add in the column series is going to be the date. In fact, actually, before we do that, let's add in the, the column value, which is going to be a count of each one of these. So we'll start with the work orders that have been removed in the week. Okay. And then we'll add in the work orders which have been added in the week.
Okay, so here we can see, let's add in the values. I'll we'll just leave it at that for just now for that. Uh, data labels, yeah, definitely put the data labels on so we can see it. So we can see here, here's our, here's our, here's our, our swing, our change here. We've had 100 work orders removed and we've had 70 work orders added. And if we add a filter here, we can see we've had 35 removed and we've had 51 added. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add in the axis and the axis is going to be the same as this one here, which is going to be the category of department. So let's add in the shared axis, which is going to be department. And we can see it's it's um, it's moved across here. Now, the other thing is this is organized based on the, the size of the actual um, difference. Okay, so a positive difference from the largest positive difference to the lowest negative difference. Now, this is not going to be done in the same manner. So what we need to do is we need to, and this is why we've chose a, a, a combination of a line and a, um, a cluster chart, because we need to add in the difference as a value here, and that's going to be used to sort this um, categories. So we're going to add in another measure. And that measure is going to be hopefully ready here. If it's not, we can add it in. Yeah, work order net change. So all I've done here is taken the work orders added in the week and removed the absolute value because we've, we've forced this to be like a negative. So we need to remove the absolute value of the work orders removed in the week. Okay, so we're just basically um, separating one from the other and that's what's going to give us this, this value here. So we're going to add the net change in as the line value. Okay, and then we're going to go in here and we're going to sort by the net change. And we can see it's now showing us the same order as the these above, but we've got this line here, so we're going to get rid of the line. So to do that, we'll go into the... Uh, no, I need to remember where this is. Data colours, no, it's the x-axis, I think it is. Let's move down here. Shapes. It's under shapes. And we want to change that shape stroke to be zero. And we can see the lines disappeared. Now we've still got the values, the net values here. So we also need to get rid of those. So let's go into our data labels. And we'll scroll at the bottom here. And we can see we can customize see these. And then we can choose the net change and we can choose not to show it. Okay, so that's that's in the background. We can see it's there. We can tidy this up a little bit and give it the title. So let's go in to our title. Let's just remove that for just now. So you can see underneath here we've got these. For that 16 we can see the, the, the net increase and the net decrease. So we can see how they were constructed. So here's this wells here. Um, which is part actually part of this other. Now this is going to be the Achilles heel of this here, is these others. So we'd need to do some some uh, add an additional measure to be able to kind of replicate that. It is doable, but I'm not going to do it just now. But if we look at the drilling, for example, here we can see that the net increase is two because we had four new ones and we closed off two, and that would give us an in an increase. Operations had five new ones. And they closed off two, so there's a net increase. And integrity arc said nine new ones, but closed off 60. So there's a net decrease. So this really helps to add a little bit more context into what what is happening behind the scenes in terms of the increase and decrease. Now, if you want to see the increase or decrease, you can just click on here. And we don't need to necessarily see all of these, but here's your 51 and your 35. Click on here. That's going to give us the work orders that have been added or removed. So it's a bit messy, obviously. We can we can delete these, and I'm sure you can tidy this up. I really just want to cover the principles behind it. But now, when somebody asks that question, you'll be able to give them an answer, which is maybe is an answer they're looking for. So, for example, somebody may ask, "Let's get rid of the filters here." 
what is that 16 new work orders that have been added? And the, the, the answer to that question is, well, there's not actually been 16 new work orders been added. There's been 50 new work orders added. There's been 30 taken away. But this 50 new work orders that have entered our backlog are these work orders here. And put a title in this chart and stuff like that. And, and then you can go and investigate these and start looking in, at them, into them in a bit more detail. Okay, so one final thing, which I think is going to be useful, is I've actually replicated this on this page here and I've set this up as a tooltip and we can just say um, net tooltip and we'll call it a net tooltip increase decrease tooltip we'll call it something like that and what we can do is we can go into the work or we can go back to our, our chart here just so you can save a little bit of space here so you can actually remove this and we can click on here we can get rid of this we'll leave it for just now um, and we can go and hover across here go into our tooltips and because i've configured that other page as a tooltip now i've got a video explaining how to create a tooltip page so i'll leave a link to that below as well but the tooltip here is going to be a page report and we're going to call it the increase decrease yep and then now if we hover above here we can see a tooltip. So you may want to, let's go to this here so we can actually see the tooltip in action. So I want to see what's happening here. Now the tooltip can't replace these values here because that's got a standard tooltip there. But if you hover above the end one, you can see, okay, well that 16 is made up of the minus 35 plus the 51. But now what we've got is a really good understanding of a a waterfall chart. We started off by looking at the different examples. So just as a quick recap, we went through using it just to show the, the split of a category and um, show the total in one chart and we compare that to a bar chart. We then went through in video number two and we looked at how to set up and configure a bar chart, um, sorry the, the waterfall chart to show the difference between the number of work orders. So this is just a count, a value, it could be anything, it could be a cost at the start of a, a period and at the end of a period and how the categories have actually contributed towards that overall change in terms of their net increase or decrease. We then went in and we looked in a bit more detail around these net increases and decreases and looked at options for identifying what new work has been added and what existing work was completed between the two periods and we created a, a chart and a tooltip that shows us how we can actually show that graphically. So hopefully this has been useful. Hopefully you can use this to start enhancing your own dashboards and you can use this to um, implement the waterfall chart, a really useful chart, even more useful when you understand what's going on behind the scenes and you can articulate the, the net increases and decreases, um, what they're made up of. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that to help, him, help me out a lot. And if you want to subscribe to this, um, this channel and get kept up to date with the, the latest videos, then press the subscribe button and click the bell to get a notification. Thanks again for listening and I'll talk to you in the next video.